Welcome to Sports Playback, the show that brings you the best highlights, scores, and matchups from all your favorite schools. With the CIF tourney closed out, it's time for states to tip, and Lawndale is your last team standing. We've got an all-Cardinals show for you tonight. Back with a state playoff special edition, I'm Karen Bright. Last week, the Cardinals made school history, advancing from the CIF quarterfinals for the very first time. And while the talent on this senior heavy squad has never been the question, they've sometimes lacked the ability to close out. Lawndale not only emerged from the semis victorious, they won up themselves in Lake Elsinore last Tuesday night, putting on a fierce show in their dominant 54-48 semifinal win over the Elsinore Tigers. The Cards, making a habit of making history, did it again on Saturday, their destination a little sweeter this time, taking the court at the Honda Center in their first ever CIF Finals appearance, tipping off against the Southern Section favorite, Canyon High School. In the first, UTEP commit Chris White hits Buda Jones, turns and straight to the hoop. But wait, there's more. TJ Johnson has more bang for our buck, sneaks the steal, tacking on two. Second quarter now, DeAndre Snedekor off the mark. Buda's there though for the no-look save. Delano Beckles in the right spot, arcs it high. Lawndale outscored Canyon 18-11 in the second. First half winding down, Beckles lobbed the alley-oop for Chemezi Metu's one-hand slam dunk, and that puts the Cardinals up 41-29 at halftime. After the half, Beckles swoops in for the lay-in. Nice slide, Delano, shooting four of five for nine points on the night. In the fourth, senior Quincy Pinkard can't quite get the shot off, White's there for the second effort, sends it out, and Newman nails it. Brandon Newman 100% shooting in threes and field goal columns tonight. At the end of regulation, we're tied at 82, so we head to OT. Pinkard this time dribbles through, takes the contact for the and one. It was 91 points apiece after the first OT. Two overtime periods, though, proved too much. Lawndale fell to Canyon 103-98 to in the end. Future Trojan Chemezi Metu led with 24 points. SDSU bound Buda Jones followed with 15. And even though it came through heartbreak, Lawndale is your 2015 Southern Section 2AA runner-up. A great baller once said, I failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. Those words come from his heiress, Michael Jordan, and seem appropriate as Lawndale gets a chance to change the story of their season and prove that maybe everything does happen for a reason as they begin their state playoff journey tonight. They'll have the comforts of the cards cage on their side. Tonight, number four Lawndale hosts the 13th seeded Grant Lancers from Van Nuys in the first round of the CIF Division II Championships. Both teams come in fresh off disappointing losses in the finals. Lawndale has only lost one game at home the entire season, and that was just by one point. They'll try to keep that up tonight. We're just a few minutes from tip-off, so I'm going to head down to the court. For Sports Playback, I'm Karen Bright. Lou, take it away. Welcome to Lawndale High School Inside the Cage. It is the CIF State Championship presented by Farmers. Rufus Washington, what a weekend it's been. The Lawndale Cardinals in a historic meltdown against Canyon High School of Anaheim in an exciting double overtime game where both teams set scoring records in CIF Southern Championship. And it is going to be a lot of questions that have to be answered tonight against these very game Grant Lancers. Well, there certainly are. I got to tell you that that game at the Honda Center is now in Lawndale's rearview mirror. Uh, as Coach Brownlee told us, they're a very resilient group. Obviously, we all know that that loss hurt. But tonight, they get to start a new run toward a state division 2A championship. And guess what? Somewhere along the way, if the cards break right, no pun intended, they may just face that, that uh, Canyon team again. But first of all, they got to take care of business against this Lancer team who knows a bit about them. And they're coming in seeking to be spoilers. That's right. Also in the same bracket, Southern bracket, is Elsinore and our old buddies Red, uh, Redlands East Valley. So we may see one of the three of those teams. But this Grant Lancer team, Karen Bright, you're going to be covering them. They're not big. They're not fast. They can't shoot inside. Wow, how did they get here? How did they get to the City 2A Championship? I think that's the most dangerous thing about them is nobody really knows. They're not tall. They can't shoot inside, but they hit their threes, and they were in the finals just like Lawndale was. So it's kind of like a secret ingredient. We're just going to have to watch and find out what happens tonight. 
All right, Chad Holloway is their big man, their leading scorer. Also, Tal Gonan and James Lara. Those are the big three for the uh, Grant Lancers. And uh, what do you do with a team like this, especially when the Cardinals, they can lose focus against a weaker opponent? Well, I think if you're the Cardinals, basically what you want to do is just play your game. You know, as Coach Wooden used to say, hey, we come out and do what we do and the rest of it will take care of itself. And I think that's what's going to happen tonight for Lawndale. Clearly the bigs are going to be a factor as usual. You can expect that the guards will be as well. Coach Brownlee said he wants them to rebound a little bit more. And I think the real thing, everybody in this gym is wondering, the players, the fans, uh, all of us are wondering, how will this team bounce back emotionally? If, if they show in the early going, and we saw them in the pregame, and they looked good. Okay, they look good. We talked to a few players. They said they were focused and ready, and I think they will be. And if they are, guess what? They have an opportunity to hold court tonight and get to come back here on Saturday night. All right, well, let's find out from Tamara Lata. Just what is the attitude of the Cardinals coming in tonight? Well, you know, I spoke with Coach Brownlee before the game, and he told me he's expecting his team to play defense for 32 minutes. He said if they can protect the three-point line, Get, get their shot inside, move their feet, and get rebounds, they will give themselves a chance to win this game tonight. He's looking to er erase a bad memory that happened last weekend. So expect him to come in, play hard, play with a lot of energy, and get, and get the lead early and sustain the lead this time. Don't let the lead slip away from him. So we're looking for a good game tonight. All right, I hope so. I heard that there were a lot of hurt feelings on uh, Sunday and Monday. They got it all out on the court, and then they started practicing. So let's uh, let the games begin, huh? Well, I got to tell you, my feelings were a little bit hurt, too. <laughs> yeah. But one of the key things that we did here is that DeAndre, and we wondered about that on Saturday. Hey, why isn't DeAndre in there? Well, he had rolled his ankle, and what a difference. As Coach said, that changed the whole rotation. Not to make any excuses, but I talked to DeAndre earlier. He said he's healthy and ready to go. And I tell you, as a former tip of the hat award winner. Now you see how valuable those tip of the hat award winners are because, boy, with no DeAndre, things got really tough for him. Well, we'll see if we can't tape one of those hats to the ankle there. <laughs> Tip-off's coming up right around the corner. Hi, I'm Donnell Beverly from the University of Connecticut, home of the 2011 National Championship UConn Huskies basketball team, and you're losing your Olympians. Beverly around the back, follow a jumper, good, beautiful shot. It wasn't too long ago that I was playing basketball right here. I just want to thank him for having me here. I'm, I'm honored to play here. And the Huskies are the top dog in 2011. Winning the NCAA championship has always been a goal of mine, but so is getting a great education that will last me a lifetime. You can achieve your goals too. All you have to do is work hard and dream hard, and you can do anything you put your mind to. Backcourt side with Rufus Washington, and Tamara Lotza and Karen Bright are going to be our, our sideline reporters, I'm sure the Grant Lancers will be introduced first tonight, Rufus, and they're coached by Howard Levine, longtime head coach, and there you see some of the Cardinal Spirit Squad. I'll tell you what, Rufus, uh, there was uh, everybody was hanging their heads after the that game on Saturday, but uh, there's one thing about it is that these people, these uh, kids get a chance to come back and do it again. And this game can be named just like you do in boxing, the redemption game, if you will. And this team certainly has uh, wants to show their home fans something. I think it's great that they get a chance to be at home. Now, one of the things they're going to do, Lou, that's a little bit of a twist here, just so you know, is that you introduce, okay, well, they're going against it. I read in the handbook that you're supposed to introduce, alternate the introductions. But instead, they're introducing the Grant team first. And number zero, Gio Quintero, a wing, a 5'10", 165-pound senior. Then it'll be Kai Smith at the point, a 5'8", 145-pound junior. Then number 43, Tal Gonan, 
a 6'2", 175-pound junior, averaging just over 11 points a game. And there's number 33, Davis Williams, just a sophomore, a 6'5", 170-pound sophomore. And uh, number 10, now that's, uh, that is five, and uh, <laughs> Howard Levine <laughs> is the head coach of the Lancers, 17 and 14, eight and four, good enough for third place in the East Valley Conference. And now here are the Lawndale Cardinals. Number zero, Tedrick T.J. Johnson, a six-foot senior. Delano Beckles, one of the captains of the Cardinals, a 6'2 junior who had nine points against Canyon. Chris White, the 6'3 senior who's headed for UTEP on the wing, averaged 11 points the other night. Power forward, number one, Broderick's Buddha Jones, headed for San Diego State, a 6'10 senior. And in the middle, the captain, number four, Shemezi Matu, headed for USC. He had 24 points and 16 rebounds and five block shots. And now we're going to have the uh, national anthem sung by Karina Estrada, a senior, for the Lawndale Cardinals, who does a terrific job. And, uh, well, I think she is undefeated for the Cardinals. With a little help from her friends, As Karina always. Estrada. And that's their own special way of doing it here in the Cardinal Cage, which has become a tradition uh, with Karina Estrada singing the national anthem. A, a, a yet another beautiful rendition, and hopefully that'll be what gets this uh, Lawndale team, as it has on so many other occasions here at the cage, off to a flying start. Our officials for tonight's contest, as you see them about to do the toss, and we got a mixed crew. I just had them. Marco yep. Montoya is on there. Oh, uh, to toss the ball is going to be Mike Munson, who's out of Orange County. And working with Mike are uh, Jake Forbes and Marco Pantoya. Marco's out of Long Beach. And I'll tell you about him. His sister is an NBA official. Oh, no kidding. All right. Well, they needed it the other day at, at uh, Honda Center. I'm going to say it, the officiating down the stretch wasn't that good. And well, Chris Wright with the first shot of the game won't go down, and the rebound goes to Davis Williams. Uh, Grant, the three-point shot, there it was right away by Chad Holloway, and the rebound goes to the Cardinals. Just underway about 30 seconds into the first quarter. Glad you joined us on City TV. T.J. Johnson drives the wing and puts it up and in. And we saw T.J. do a lot of that the last time, and that's his favorite move 
is to drive straight down the paint with a little teardrop jumper. At 11 points against Canyon at the CIF Southern Section Championship. Turn around jump shot, won't go down for Gonan. And the rebound comes off, and Chris White comes up court. So what are you expecting tonight from these Cardinals, Rufus? Well, I expect them to go back to their game. They're, and as you can see already, looking inside the Buddha, that's exactly what I was saying, to go back to their game, which is to feed the two big men, control the boards, just as we've seen them do the last three times we've seen them. And now they're coming with some pressure defense. That they uh, let Talagonan alone underneath, and Grant is on the board. Well, it's a very well coached steal. team. Right, and no one was there to protect on the backside. Looks like a zone deep. Oh, yeah. an alley oop, backdoor slam dunk by Shemezi. And that was a set play all the way. You saw him come off the high elbow and curl toward the basket, made eye contact with his guard. Easy two points. Thrown in and stolen away. Buddha picks it up. And back come the Cardinals. Scoop up and under, won't go down. But a shot with ball is taken back away by TJ and laid up, no, by Jones, but a foul on number 33, Davis Williams. And it'll be two shots at the line for Jones. So an ill-advised shot by, by TJ, but he ended up with the ball back on a good hustle play. Exactly, and that was the key to it, Lou, was the hustle play. He never gave up on the ball, and in a good omen, Buddha steps to the line and knocks down the first. He was three out of five in the championship game. And the second shot is up and in. Four points for Brodericks. And it's an eight to two. Oh, Jones steals the inbound pass from Gonan and slams it home, All right? He has a half a dozen. And just like that, Londell's jumped out to a 10-2 lead. Shot from outside, doesn't go. Chimizzi decides to lead the break. He goes down, lays it up and in, coast to coast. And that's going to force Coach Howard Levine into an early timeout. And Chimizzi finding it a little bit too easy. Let's hope that he holds his focus, even though it's a 12-2 lead. With 5.32 left to go. And he went coast to coast with that one. Laid it up off the glass, as you can see on the replay, beautifully. Now, in, in looking at the eyes of the Cardinals, they are steely-eyed like a Clint Eastwood gunfighter right now. All business. No smiles out on the court. They're a little bit smiley uh, to start the game. And you can, you can there's a lot of tension in here tonight. There's a lot is. of expectations for this team to win. And well, that's a good thing, right? Well, that's a good thing, but also no one knows what to expect from it. Because, you know, and, and, and I know we'll move on with it, but the last Saturday was devastating, to say the least. But here's what I like that I've heard. We've heard the coaching staff. I've talked to Coach Parker. I talk, We talked to Coach Brownlee. He said, this is a resilient bunch, and they've already put it behind them. And I said, well, Coach, you're right. They're a lot more resilient than I am. And that three-pointer put up and in by Kai Smith. And he was wide open after the press. His two Lancers snuck away from the full-court press. Delano with a three. A little bit short. Rebound is chased around. Picked up by Jones. No! Put in by Semezi, and he has a quick half dozen. He and Buda both with a half dozen here in the first three minutes of the contest. Ball down underneath, and it's not stolen away. Taken by Quintero. And we have a 30-second timeout on the official, and was the shot clock wasn't even going right. yet. So that call was made by? Marco Pantoja. OK. Marco, one of my uh, classroom instructors, you know, each and every year. Believe it or not, officials have to go to school. I, I know you guys don't think that. Well, after you what we, we saw. We just roll out of bed and do what we do. But we have to go to school. We have to put the hours in. We take tests. Well, you maybe, know, just to get to come maybe, out on the court. Maybe some of y'all took to, a, took, played hooky there yeah. in the fourth quarter on yeah. Saturday. And, uh, and as I was saying, Marco's been one of my instructors. 
uh, for a couple of years. And what a good job he did. Buda steals the ball. Here comes Chemez. He gets it from Delano. Now wants to go baseline underneath the TJ. Oh. Oh, roll in. <laughs> Rebound, though, is tipped out to White. Over to TJ, drives the baseline. He'll <laughs> lay it up and in. No defense at all. And 4.30 left to go in the first quarter. Wide open for a three is McQueen in the ball game for the first time and taken by jo uh, Matu. He has three rebounds, one of them offense. Underneath to Buda, and they'll have that all day. And that got the sweet roll. Delano steals the ball. Wow. He's hammered. And let's see if he gets two shots at the line or not. He's yeah. hammered by Williams. Coming in is James Casanova for the Lancers. No, it's not a shooting foul, or is it a foul wow. at all? It's just out of bounds. Wow. Okay. He got well, hammered there on the replay, Rufus. Right. Well, he sure did. You know, and, and, and we all thought this official seemed to indicate that it was a two-shot foul. I mean, he was... Uh, the outside official was one. That's Jake Forbes who made the call, but they're going to stick well, the with it. You know, the shot clock, okay, they had to put the shot clock down, but Delano on the inbound, and he lays it up and in. And now the Lancers are looking at each other like, what happened? Well, it's a 15-point lead. Now the ball is over to Quintero, lays it up too hard off the glass, and he was pushed, oh. says the official, and he'll get two shots. Matu with his first foul, I do believe. Yeah. Well, and what I'd love to see on replay, not exactly sure where we saw the contact by Chemezi, but they call the foul on him. Here's the replay right up. First one is missed as Contero is a 62% free throw shooter. There you see Chris Brownlee talking to Brandon Newman. These Lancers, and the second one is missed, and the re offensive rebound yeah. goes to Holloway, but he missed the shot. In fact, they got a pair of offensive rebounds on that possession. Shot is blocked by Shemezi. Back comes Shemezi, but he has the ball stolen away from him. And a foul on Chris White, and they should give a foul on the floor, yeah. not Chris White. So that's Chris's first personal, second team foul. As we'll take a look at it again. Now you see Chris with the reach in, actually good call by the official, was on top of the play. With the ball now is Casanova. Now to Quintero. Has a three, they see an opening, they'll take the shot, it's missed, but two with the rebound. And back come the Cardinals. Gets it to TJ with 3.05 left to go in the first quarter. Matu with it, way outside. TJ says, I'll take the three. Thank wow. you very much. TJ is hot tonight. He's got seven already here in the first quarter. And it's a 23-5 ball oh, game. Buddha steals it. <laughs> But no it's stolen one, right back. Well, that's because no one told Delano there was a defender behind him. No communication on that play. Oh. And that three put up and in by number 22, Chad Holloway. So two three-pointers so far for Grant. And that snaps an 11-0 run. TJ with another three, wow. and he rolls it in. Rolling in threes. Coming across the line is Casanova. Casanova slips and just hands the ball off to TJ. Jones gets it to, actually TJ gets it to Jones and he's fouled and this will be two. Casanova with the foul. First personal, second team foul. See on the replay here. Buddha with the path to the basket, and Casanova does the only thing he can do, which is to stick his arms in there and try to deflect the ball, but instead he fouls Buddha, sends him to the line, and Buddha's now hit three straight free throws. Now, uh, you know what? You got to hand it to Casanova, who's listed at 5'10, going up against Buddha, who's a foot taller. 
Missed that one. Brandon Newman in the ball yeah. game and uh, gets the ball out of bounds for the Cardinals. Brandon Newman doing what Brandon Newman does, and that's be disruptive. Now, he got a Being hand a in there because he could have given the uh, defensive rebound to Grant, but instead he contested it, and it actually went off of the Grant player. Snedeker in the game now, and a three put up and in by guess who? T.J. Johnson, 13 points of Baker's dozen. T.J. in the early lead for the player of the game or tip of the hat. Ball underneath, lay it up, no! And a foul, a push by Williams, and that should be three on him. RC on the board, they recorded as three, so that's his second because Casanova got a foul, and so that would be two on uh, Davis Williams. That's right. Well, it's yeah, three personals, or three team fouls. Brandon Newman gets it over to Johnson. The hot hand left in. Now, streaking down the middle was Quincy Pinkard. Now, TJ with another three. That's off the mark. DeAndre with the rebound. Can't get it to go in. Rebound goes out of bounds to the Lancers. And there you see the energy that DeAndre Snedecor brings on the floor that was missing in the fourth quarter and halfway through the third when he went out with the rolled ankle. Yep, you're right. With the ball now is Casanova. Full court pressure shown by the Cardinals. Quincy Pinkard and TJ Johnson. Down underneath. Back to Quintero. Ball caught by Quintero. And he stepped on the base, it actually traveled. And boy, I think we have to do a GoFundMe project to get this floor <laughs> fixed. There you go, Wendy Case. Well, at least Londell's players, that's one advantage of playing at home. You kind of know what the floor is going to do. Either that or get the kids skates. Snedeker has it, now loses the ball. 30 to eight is our score, under a minute left. Quintero has it. Now over to number 13 in the game. Or is that 15? This Joseph Lara. Yep, that's 15. Lara has it, takes a shot, and it's off the mark. And back comes TJ. Johnson with it, wants to go all the way, passes it back to Newman. Nice little bunny. 25 seconds left to go in the first, Rufus. And with Grant, the ball now is for the last shot. Casanova, shot clock is dark. Now McQueen has it. McQueen almost lost it, and it rolls out of bounds. TJ was there, and it'll be Lawndale ball. Lawndale's ball with 5.9 left. They've got an opportunity to get off a very good shot at the basket. They already lead, as you can see, 32 to 8 according which they've dominated. There it is, you gotta put it up. Over to Newman, oh! And great teamwork by Quincy Pinker. Quincy Pinker had an outside jumper that he could have taken because, and no one would have followed him because it was against the clock, but instead he hits a cutting Brandon Newman going to the basket. And as you can see on the replay, Brandon lays it up off the glass and that gives Lawndale a 34 to eight lead here after one quarter at the cage league. You know, I dare I say, I haven't seen anything that pretty to end a quarter since UCLA defeated Missouri in the, sec in the uh, second game of the 1995 NCAAs. Let's go to Karen. Lou, the Cardinals are up 34 to eight and not an ounce of celebration out of any of them. And that's because Coach Brownlee told me they're still hurting from Saturday's loss. He says his guys are okay, but they're still feeling the pain of that heartbreaking loss at the Honda Center. So they're gonna be all business tonight and not much celebration. Back to you. All right, thanks, Karen. That game that I was just referring to was 20 years ago. These kids weren't even around. Yep. Ball is taken in, bounds by Joseph Lara. And the Lancers have to try to figure out this Cardinal defense and a block by Newman, who is playing Velcro defense again. I thought it was pretty good, D. But he does pick up the foul for blocking. We'll see here on the replay. 
He's moving his feet real well and giving them ground. Boy, that's in fact looks like he was pushed off on. That's a tough one to take. There's a the ball out of bounds, tipped. So the Lancers will get it. And must have gone off a foot because it's a new 35 for Grant. And now Londo going with a three guard offense essentially with uh, Quincy Pinker, Brandon Newman, and TJ all on the floor. Casanova can't make the shot. Snedeker comes down with the rebound and. And they said it was a traveling on the play in the exchange between DeAndre and Brandon Newman. They see DeAndre with the rebound. Ball down underneath to McQueen. Step back jumper <laughs> blocked by Shemezi. McQueen stepped back. He didn't step back far enough. <laughs> he needed to go out to the parking lot. Alley oop to Shemezi, right. but it was blocked by Ta Talgonan and out of bounds. And it'll go to, let's watch it on the replay, Rufus. And then Gonan got it. whacked with a forearm. In the ball game is Chad Holloway. Out of the ball game is Gio Quintero. So inbounding the ball will be Tal Gonan. Trying to get through and does. Gets by Shemezi as the offense and defense gets set. But these Lancers, I'm sure, just want to catch it and shoot it. Just like Gonan did. He has four points. Scores the first bucket of the quarter. Newman flying in, hair going all over the place. Strata is short. Rebound is off to McQueen. Going in with a long three, and it won't go down. Rebound to Snedeker. Gets it over to Shemezi. Shemezi passes it to Snedeker. <laughs> and a nice thank you very much. Score the basket for DeAndre. A nice teamwork by Shemezi with the assist. Giving it back to his buddy who fed him the ball. 6.25 left to go in the first half. Another big 20 plus point lead for the Cardinals. Let's we'll see how they handle this towards the end of the quarter. Beckles will be in along with Buddha Jones at the next whistle. Double team. Now the shot is put up and in by Lara. He has his first bucket of the game. Pinkard has it. Pinkard almost lost it out of bounds, and he did. Five turnovers for Lawndale. Semezi out, Buda in, Beckles in, TJ out. And there's James Lara, Joseph Lara, averaging 6.7 points a game. Full court pressure being applied by Brandon Newman. And it's a little bit more than token pressure that he's applying. It's a fifth turnover on the Lancers. Snedeker with it. Gets it over to Beckles with a nice soft touch. He has four. Five minutes and 30 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Smith with it. Trying to call a play. Find an open man. Gonan has it. He'll shoot it from anywhere, like right there. And we'll go down. Snedeker with another rebound. By my count, that's five. Newman with the pass. He'll take a two handed uh, chest shot. Beckles with the rebound. He'll dribble back out. Good decision by Delano. Good decision by Delano. We'd like to have seen him have gone to the basket a little more aggressively. And now Londale starting to play just a little bit sloppy. They're going to say there's a foul. Got an elbow underneath, and let's see who it's called on. Well, there's a hold. Well, it was called, okay, they're taking it to the baseline. I thought for a moment they called it against Grant. Now the indication is that it's against Grant. So if we can see that replay one more time, Tom, and uh, oh, uh, uh, and one. for Brandon Newman, and the foul against number 15. Joseph Lara. So the foul on Lara, basket for Newman. There you see it right there. Let 
letting him almost saddle him up. Brandon Newman was one out of two in free throws. So the five team fouls, I, I believe it was either Lara or Casanova who made the foul. I don't think Casanova is out right now, so we'll give the second uh, foul before that to Lara. So right. by my count, we'll go to the scorer's table at halftime. Lara has two. Newman misses the shot, the end one. Rebound goes to Holloway. 4.45 left to go in the quarter. Three-point shot put up. Won't go down for Lara. McQueen has it. He puts it up. That won't go down. Snedeker says, it's my rebound. And tripped up as Delano hands it off to Buda. He goes, tries to go up, but he's fouled by Holloway. And Broderick's Buda Jones will go to the line to shoot two. Now let's see, did they get? Well, no, they gave it to gave a player to with a five. Yeah, that they gave Lara. it to Laura. And by an unofficial account, that would be three on Laura. Broderick's. Now with 10 points. And a good night from the free throw line. He's four out of five so far. Back into the ball game is Casanova for Laura. And Jones was run into. He makes his 11th point. And it's a 40 point lead. Full court pressure and the ball is stolen away by Jones. Almost stolen away by Smith. Now Snedeker whips it around to Broster in the ball game. That's off the mark. Good and to see Beckles David with the rebound. David Broster, our social media correspondent. So Broster Beckles, 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 Beckles says, this is how you do it, son. <laughs> he puts up the triple and he's got seven points on the game. And it's a 45-12 score, just under four minutes left. Gonan with a 28-footer, that misses. The rebound comes all the way out to Newman. Newman trying to go all the way, and Snedeker with the rebound and put back. He has four points. Boy, he's really getting dirty down low. Long shot by Smith off the glass, won't go down. Rebound to Broster. Beckles yeah. tried to get it on the long pass, but it wouldn't, uh, it's knocked out of bounds. And coming in the ball game is Chris Murray, the quarterback, in for Buda Jones. Also coming back in is Chris White and TJ Johnson. Out is Newman. And Beckles. Let's watch Beckles is looking at his left hand. Might have got it dinged up a bit. Into TJ with 335 left. Wants to go baseline. Now gets it out to Broster. Broster. And of course, with this huge lead, what it does is it gives Coach Brownlee an opportunity to get a lot of guys some play in time. That shot partially blocked, but coming away with it is uh, TJ. Shot clock doesn't reset, though. Because of the block shot, didn't hit iron. Now it's nine seconds left on the shot clock. Five seconds. Johnson says, I'll just take it from here, short. Rebound is off, and volleyballed out of bounds by yeah. the Lancers. It should be Cardinal ball with 2.59 left to go in the first half. It is. But And they get virtually a full clock. With, well, now they reset the clock to 35. Now you see that just tipped out of bounds by Casanova. Murray passed the ball perfectly, and then the Broster lost it. It's stolen away. Going all the way is McQueen. He can't get it to go down. Rebound by Dave or Williams. Davis Williams, no. So Snedeker oh, has it. Look oh, out. Wow. And tell you what, Casanova's not afraid to get his nose dirty. And they give a clear foul is on Snedeker. Snedeker. So things get a little bit out of control with this big 35 point lead. Rondell, and, and this is what, not that we expect this team to mount that type of comeback, but you want to maintain your focus. We got a timeout on the floor called by Lawndale. It's a full timeout. And I tell you what, that's, that just shows the heart of this Grant Lancer team. Only 17 and 14 coming in, eight and four in uh, third place in the East Valley of the LA City section. And they're five and two on the road, Rufus, and they won seven out of their last eight. So they gotta be doing something right to get to this point. Um, 
Last year they were 15 and 15, 8 and 4, and now we go to Tamara. As expected, the Cardinals are off to a great start. In that last time out, Coach Brownlee told his team, everybody look to hit the gaps, keep playing hard. You are doing a good job. Let's see if they can keep it up. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Tamara. So Brownlee, so far calling a, uh, a good game, keeping his, his bigs fresh. Keeping his bigs fresh and getting a whole lot of other guys some valuable playing time as well. I mean, DeAndre Snedeker is bigger than their biggest guy right there. And the inbound pass is stolen away. A bushel of turnovers by, the, uh, by this team. And like you said, when you see guys like Chris Murray getting the opportunity to get in there, get some shots up, ball will go over to Lawndale. This is good. And now we got another Cardinal coming on the floor. Let's see if we can get Terrell Johnson, the 5'11 sophomore. Hadn't seen Terrell this whole playoff run. Talk about a, far, a, a forgotten man. The Broster, he had that label, but he's uh, now it's over to Snedeker, and he's pushed by his opposite number, Chad Holloway. That'll be his first, and it's bonus time for the Cardinals for the next two minutes and nine seconds. And there you see it on the replay. Yep, so. so Broster goes to the line to shoot two. He did not get in the, the game against Canyon. And the free throw is. He missed the front end of the one and one. So now taking it is Holloway. Holloway goes in, won't go down, rebound to Holloway. Gets it back out. Over to McQueen. He'll go for three. That's off the mark. Rebound is to Snedeker. He's a machine today, leading the team in rebound with seven. Check that, eight rebounds now, Rufus. Wow. You know, and Lewis, I said here, man, and, 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 and you can't help but think, even though we're on to something else, that's an air ball by Chris Murray. Murray used to throwing the ball for distance up the field. Well, he's used to having his targets moving. Right. So the ball gets turned over, seven turnovers for the Cardinals, eight for the Lancers. Holloway passes it right to DeAndre Snedeker. So nine turnovers now for Grant. 120 left to go in the first half. And you want to see one of these guys like Broster, Chris Murray, or even Terrell Johnson score a basket. Or Snedeker, that works too. He has a half a dozen, Rufus. Well, I mean, you expect DeAndre to score. Yeah. And a foul on Murray, reaching in on Kai Smith. So that'll be Chris's first personal 15 foul. So it's good to see these guys get some playing time, that's for sure. And they've been held scoreless since the 432 mark at least. That's when I marked it as a 42 12 game. Oh, and now you did it. They get a basket. That basket scored by number two, Kai Smith. So that snaps a huge run. 50 seconds left to go in the first half. Broster with it. Broster gets it back over to Murray. Back to Snedeker, he'll take a three and not make it. The rebound is tipped around by Johnson and taken by White. White will control it. 30 seconds on the game clock, 27 on the shot clock, so a three second difference. Calling the play is White. Snedeker comes out to get it, being guarded by McQueen. Now to Murray, he'll lay it up <laughs> on the, the, the so reverse Bill side. Chris Murray, a deuce. So 10 seconds left to go in the half, and now the ball is taken by Broster. Broster taking himself. <laughs> He's got two points now. And that's what I wanted to see. And that shot's stolen. Oh, oh go. Chris Murray almost got that after the steal. And it's a 53-14 lead for the Lawndale Cardinals as they hold East of the uh, Grant Lancers to just six points in the second quarter. And they scored 19 of their own again in a game. And let's go over to Karen Bright, who's with Coach Brownlee. 
Coach, 53-14, that's more like a final score than a halftime score. What are you most happy with what you're seeing on the court right now? We need, um, I'm not really, really excited about it. Um, you know, we're just a, we're a little better, more have a little more depth, uh, more senior laden than they are. You know, it's a, a well-respected Coach Levine does it gets the most out of his guys. So I want to say that first off. Um, but, you know, against what, whatever's up next, you know, we got to get a lot more sharper. Um, against good teams, as you've seen, uh, we'll let leads go. And so we're not as sharp as, as we need to be. So moving forward to the second half, besides being sharp, what else are you looking for from your guys? More, more defensive intensity and more attention to the defense. Thanks, Coach. Back to you guys. All right, thank you very much, Karen. And the Cardinals went on a 16-0 run between baskets of the Grant Lancers. And uh, tell you what, uh, Chris Brownlee said it right there. The one thing that uh, was really sitting and eating away at the bottom of my stomach is how are you going to keep this team focused and interested and, and not have what happened on Saturday happen right here tonight? <laughs> Well, the chances of that, first of all, are slim and nothing. I am not yeah. going to say nothing. <laughs> yeah. I understand that. But rest assured, this Grant Lancer team, hardy and game though they may be, they're, they're not the Canyon Comanches by a long shot. But, uh, but, they have a lot but of heart, right. that's for sure. You're right. And that's what this team has to take away from an opponent like this. And to me, if you're the coach, when you go in, that's what you point out to them. These guys know that they're out man. They know that, they, that, that, that you guys are better athletes. But look at them. They're still fighting as if though they've got a chance, and Absolutely. that's what you want to have in this team. And I think they'll do that. Also, let, let's acknowledge, though, that Coach Brownlee, you know, I, I think of a display of sportsmanship, and he mentioned that he knows Coach Levine pulled his stars before halfway through the second and, and allowed the end of the bench some very valuable playing time, and they gave nothing away on the lead. They're still leading by 39 points. What else right. you want, Lou? I, I mean, want, my goodness. Uh, hey, I want to see this team finish a game right. like this. Okay, if well, they have a 40-point lead now, I want to see a 40-point lead at the end right. of the fourth quarter. Well, they finished That's the first all half. I want. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> That's all. That's all I want. Well, leading the way, uh, T.J. Johnson had a huge first quarter, had 13 points, three three-pointers. And uh, Broderick's Jones had 11 points, six points for Shemezi, two for David Broster, six for Brandon Newman, two for Chris Murray, six for Snedeker, seven for Delano, and Chris White yet to get on the scoreboard. And uh, we will have the third quarter when we come back and see if the Cardinals can finish off this team. All right. Back here at the cage, just before the third quarter, and uh, these Londale Cardinals took their foot off the gas, but still have a 53 to 14 lead over the Grant Lancers. I had to check myself there, as you saw Shemezi Batu, there's Brandon Newman warming up. The Grant Lancers just coming back out. And you're watching the CIF State Championships presented by Farmers. And glad you joined us on City TV with Rufus Washington. I'm Lewis Dowers and the state rankings. That uh, is one way you can tell the big disparity with this team is Chris Brownlee. And there's his back to you there along with Walt Williams, one of the assistant coaches, is the Lancers are ranked 543rd and the Cardinals are ranked 72nd in the state. Right. Well, scoring for that, the Lancers. That says a little something. Yeah. Five points for Kai Smith, two points for Joseph Lara, four for Tal Gonan, three for Chad Holloway, and that is it. That adds up to 14. Chris That's what White. they call basic math. Yeah, even I can do that. <laughs> I almost used up all my toes. Mike Munson, the official, I'm sorry, inbounds the ball. Lawndale starts the second half. TJ has the ball. Same starting five that started the game off. The two with it. Takes an outside shot and buries it. No, 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 yes. Yep. <laughs> 
Jamez with a quiet eight points tonight. He had six in the first, scoreless in the second. Of course, didn't play a whole lot in the second as the uh, bench played most of that period. And this Lancer team is fired up as the shot's taken by Smith, and he puts it up and in. And I know exactly what Coach Levine told him in the locker room. So we got him right where we want him. <laughs> White has it, gets it outside the Beckles. As Holloway is just challenging him to take that shot. Jones from the free throw line. He has 13. Big night for Buddha tonight. And that makes it a 57-17 game. Well, he's, uh, like I say, he's already got one ring. So why not have him be uh, leading the way in some categories? He's been active on defense as well. Smith keeps it in bounds from the long skip pass. Bounces it now to Quintero for three. That's, oh, I thought that was <laughs> off the mark. Right, but it was off the glass instead. Ooh. So the Lancers waking up. They've already scored six points. Almost, that's what they scored in the second quarter. And we're not even two minutes in. Samezi slips in that spot on the floor, and now it's going to be a backcourt violation. Eight turnovers on the Cardinals. Maybe I think I will do a GoFundMe no. thing or a <laughs> kickstart kickstart funding, go go whatever it. Yep. And let's see, now looks like Longdale call that timeout, 30-second timeout, and it is. Second charge, timeout. Charge to the Cardinals. So and, it's still awful quiet here tonight, Rufus. Well, I think a lot of fans know that they got a basketball game. They don't fully appreciate that, hey, the sectional was one thing. Now you're in a run for a state title. That's right. Okay. That's bigger things. Exactly. It's been a long time for the Cardinals. And now there's a, hey, a towel. A rare appearance by a towel. That's right, in front of the Cardinal bench. Delano Beckles doing some house cleaning. And he comes back in the picture. Tal Gonan inbounds the ball right in front of us, gets it to Holloway. Lancers in their brown with the orange and white trim going left to right across your dial on City TV. Three point shot taken by Quintero, wow. and that must be his office right there. And that's their strength. We talked about that early in the pregame, and if anything, that's what Coach Levine told him, hey, the three-point shot is ours. We aren't going to get much inside, but then again, that's not where we make our money at, guys. Shemezi wow. goes baseline <laughs> and one. Now, now there's a double technical uh, against Shemezi and number 33. First of all, number 33 fouled him. That's his third, and then with the technical, that's going to be his fourth. Williams just about saddling him up. And and and, and Chimezzi going them into that doesn't really say anything. Just gives him a look. Now you got to say to the official, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I mean. I think that 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 I can only assume was considered a, a act of taunting, which would be a technical. Now they're over at the table working through it. That's the official, Mike Monson, great guy, veteran official, playoff official, obviously, working the state championships, and he's consulting with the table on the call, because if the call stands, it's going to be Chemezi's now second look at Chris. foul. Look at Chris quietly. Uh telling him what he thinks. As I say, it'll be Tremezzi's second, but by our count, it's going to be the fourth on uh, Davis Williams. Right, so went over to the scorer's table. Williams did have two, also Lara with two. And now Casanova with two. So with a foul in the technical, now Williams has four. Right. If the call stand, and it looks like they're going to stand, so Shemezi going for the and one. So he gets the and one. So now we'll see who takes the foul shots. 
on the technical. So it, Shemezi no, takes no, a seat. No, there won't be a technical because it was a double Double tech. technical, so that washes right. it out, okay. And so is that 11 for Shemezi now? Yes. And 60 to 23. An old-fashioned three-point play and an air ball, so that's a turnover on the Lancers. Snedeker has it. Snedeker, <laughs> like a bull in a china closet, gets his eighth point on the layup. And a timeout. And one and of the officials is asking for another yeah. towel. And you can see it from here, the uh, wet spot on the floor. Is that the only towel? <laughs> well, it's, it, it, it's a towel. It, it yeah, beats, that's true. It beats weeks past. <laughs> Well, it's kind of you know right. they, it's kind of like a, our production crew where they don't believe in paper towels or napkins in the in the feeding frenzy before the game. Right. <laughs> well, they sure don't believe in napkins. That's for sure. That's right. But they've got three right. star awards in their back pocket too. Five twenty left to go in the third quarter. A comfortable lead for the Cardinals. Going in with it, he has it from the elbow, and that's money for him. He has a half a dozen. 5.05 left to go in the third quarter. Beckles says, I'll take this very much, and an air ball. That was too easy. So it turns it over. Nine turnovers for the Cardinals. And up and under, Holloway can't get it to go down as he almost put it in his pocket and brought it back out. Wow. TJ, wide open. Blows by. Has his first bucket since the first quarter and has 15. Smith with it. Smith. Going against TJ underneath, and somebody lost <laughs> Mr. McQueen. His first bucket. So a lapse of concentration by the Cardinal defense. As White has it, gets it back to Johnson. Now out front to Snedeker. I like this lineup that's out there for Chris Brownlee right now. And if you're looking for an omen, it was right about at this same point, Lou against Canyon, and Chris White drives the baseline and scores it. That Canyon, if you recall, I said Lou, in fact, it was a little bit later than this because it was like 10 minutes, and I said Lou, there are 10 minutes still left in the game. Right, shot is missed, and the rebound is to Jones. And White gets it to Snedeker. Now TJ has it. Three-pointer by White, no, rebound is off to Snedeker, he earns two play. shots on the play. Fouls on number 12 seems to be the indication that's McQueen. DeAndre Snedeker going to the line. You see it on the replay. So I'm going to the floor on the replay. Now he goes to the line to shoot a pair. He gets one, rattles it home. Brandon Newman coming in for Delano Beckles. Instant pressure. I'm looking. I'm trying to figure out a name to, to give Brandon because when he steps on the floor, things start to happen on both ends, but particularly on the defensive end. 68 27. Velcro. So he gets on you, you can't get him off. Let's watch him on Casanova. Casanova has been a little bit of a thorn. He's not afraid to stand in there. And take the lumps, but the ball is taken away by Snedeker. Well, Velcro got a hand in there. If that's what we're going to go with, I'm going to keep looking for one, but we'll <laughs> stick with that for the moment. White with a three <laughs> batter. He has five. And All now it's 71 corner. to 27. Quintero has it now to Gonan. McQueen couldn't get it over Jones, but. Holloway will take it wow. and he'll make a three. That's just his sixth point, but only well, well, two of them are on uh, three pointers. Now they're up to the 30 point mark. Trailing by 41. Down low to Buddha Jones. Nice <laughs> baseline fall away jumper for Broderick's. He has 15. Okay, Cardinals, you got to keep it up because Lou doesn't, he's not a believer yet. Nope. Saw it too many times this season. 
They got away with it twice, but not the third time. And there's a shot put up and in. That shot by Holloway. And he has eight. Newman running the show for Chris Brownlee's offense. Snedeker for wow. three. DeAndre. Inside, outside, doesn't matter. Seven. I got DeAndre with 13 on the night. Casanova brings it across in a timeout. No, no, nope. 10 second count. Oh, 10 second count, you're right. That's that Lawndale defense. And Casanova says, what happened? I need some help. So that's turnover number 13. And it's inbounded to Newman. So Newman and TJ and the TJ Johnson in the backcourt. Dumped into Jones. Jones with a step back baseline wow. jumper again. Nice fall away jumper by Buddha Jones. And he has 17 points. Casanova with it to Gonan. Wide open three from the wing. No, a little bit long. And Jones with another rebound. Johnson with it. With one minute left in the third quarter, gets it back to Jones. Decides to eat some clock. Newman. Jones way up top. Now he dumps it down to Snedeker. Snedeker out to White, steps back for three. Off the mark, rebound is off to McQueen. Long to get another possession. Gonan with a long three. In and out, almost back in. The rebound is tipped up and in by Holloway. He has 10. 30 seconds left. And Chris White. Makes an assessment of the offense, holding on to things with the shot clock dart. Passes the ball to Newman on the weave. Man to man defense being shown by the Lancers. And I'd like to see them hold this all the way for the last shot, and that shot come inside of five seconds. Now that's good D that was played by Grant. Casanova on the defense on TJ. So now we get some replacements as Holloway goes out. Along with Gonan. In is McQueen. And Okini. Shot taken with two and a half left. Won't go down. Rebound is off. And that's going to end the third quarter of play. 78 to 34 is our score. But uh, 20 points scored by Grant in that quarter, Rufus. Right, and let's 25 go over to Karen scored Lee. by the Cardinals. Let's go <laughs> over to Karen. Lou, Lawndale on the right side of a blowout score so far tonight. But when I talked to Coach Brownlee and his squad earlier in the week, they told me that this is the point in the game where they're going to be focusing extra hard. They say that when they get these big leads, they tend to lose focus and that they're going to have to work on that for when they face tougher teams down the lane. Back to you. All right, Karen, thank you very much. Eight more minutes to go. Well, well, well I hope they're happy they're leading by 44. Lead. At halftime, they were leading by 39. Mm -hmm. So they've extended the lead. Okay, I, I spent a few uh, a few years in St. Louis. You got to show me. All right, well, they're getting ready to show you right now. Okay. 7.59, the quarter just underway. Brandon Newman, like Velcro, on Azat. Bagdasian in the ball game. First time for Howard Levine. Also in the game is Armand Sarkeesian. And he puts up a shot giving some energy. He'll get two at the line. Fouls on Chris White. It's probably his first of the game. Second. This Longdale team hasn't committed many timeouts. Let's go to the replay if we have a chance. While at the line shooting a pair is O'Keen and O'Keen hits the first. So he has one point. Make it two. He's, I bet you these kids don't miss a whole lot of free throws. 
Problem don't miss a lot of class either. That'll get you on the short side of a 78 36 score, too. <laughs> All right. 78 36 is the score. Shot taken will go down and it's knocked out of bounds, and it'll be Lancer ball. Coming back in is Terrell Johnson, the younger TJ, and also Quincy Pinkard. As well as Chris Murray and David Broster. Okay, so and Pinkard's gonna pick up that foul. Tallest kid out there is Broster at 6'3". I don't think we've ever seen this lineup no, we on the floor this season, or particularly a lineup this short for Lawndale. Bagdazian has it. Gets it over to O'Keen, and he has a three-pointer. So here they come. 78-39. Who had that last foul? Uh, Quincy Pinker. Okay, thank you. His first. Pinker gets the ball back, wanted to take the long shot, and now Chris Murray is fouled by O'Keen. So a quick 5-0 run for Grant. As you said, makes it a 70. Oh, and it's a running clock, by the way. Okay. Newman has it on the inbound. He puts it up. He's fouled. So if it's Williams, he could be fouled out. No, it's not. It's on Joseph Lara. That's his third. And should be the fifth team foul. So Newman going to the line to shoot two and the running clock at 530 and counting. And, of course, the running clock gets invoked when a team is leading by 40 at the start or at any point during the fourth quarter. First one will go in as uh, Lawndale without a point until now. So Newman with seven points, one out of two from the line. And ball goes out of bounds with well, well, there you this, see the running clock. Yeah, and this would also typically be Kenny Sherman time, but Kenny Sherman not even dressed or on the bench. Ball is and stolen by Brewster. Rebound put up and in by Johnson. His first bucket of the game. So he gets on the scoreboard. And if I'm not mistaken, I think everybody who's been on the floor has gotten on the board as number 33 Davis Williams scores there. Except maybe Quincy. Quincy's the only guy who's not scored. Murray trying to get it to go down and won't go. So coming up with the rebound is Williams. And look out, he has his pocket pick. Murray gets it to Broster, lays it up and in. And Murray does what he do, does best, and he gives up the assist. Bagdazarian with was the victim there, and now O'Keen has it, tries to get it to Bagdazarian, and he throws it. It's tipped and stolen over to Broster. Broster is a machine! And, 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 and he has six points! And that may be a career high for him. And now Bagdazarian sees a bunch of white jerseys and trying to get rid of it. Finally does. Gets it over to Sarkeesian. And he puts it up and in. And you like to see a kid like that, Lou, uh, one, get some playing time and get a score. And again, there you are with Grant continuing to be competitive. Williams, no, but he's fouled and he should get two at the line. Newman was just standing there, so up oh, they give it to Newman for standing there. Okay. There's Newman standing. Yeah. And he didn't take yeah. the swipe. So, uh, okay. Murray took the swipe. And QP, QP Quincy Pinkert, the only um, Cardinal who's not scored in this contest. But he's the type of guy, he could care less about that. He just wants a W. <laughs> he's out there now to Williams left. And Williams puts a second one up and in. He has two points. Now Broster with it. 
Broster against Williams. Passes it back out front to Newman. Catches, throws a three-pointer up. Won't go down. Rebound is fought for. Broster can't get it, so it'll go to Grant. So Londale pressure in full court now. Casanova hands it off. Pinkard around the back, and it's saved once, but not twice by the Cardinals. Nice steal by Quincy, though, and the behind-the-back pass. Couldn't uh, actually hit his man. I, I wouldn't give that turnover to Quincy. I think that went off the pass. Oh, Newman, Newman steals it. Gets the zone Newman rebound. So he gets a steal, a shot attempt, a offensive rebound and a basket all on one play. Wide open is Quintero. Can't get it to go down. Goes out of bounds. Turns it over to the Cardinals. 16 turnovers by the Lancers. You know, and, and they haven't, they've only had this mercy rule for about five years, Lou. And I got to say, it really is a common sense rule um, to, to employ. Broster with a shot. Whoa. One minute left to go. In and out. Way down. And now Murray. I believe he fouls O'Keen. So it'll be Chris's second and fifth team foul. With 45 seconds left to go in the ball game. And another foul by Murray. Actually kicked the ball by Murray, so they'll reset the clock to 35. And by the time they inbound, the shot clock now off. Passing over with it. And he gets bullied down the ground by Quincy Pinkard. So that'll be Quincy's second personal. And 16 foul. And this comes a point, Lou, there are 15 seconds left. Officials anxious and properly so to get this one over. Casanova with it, with seven seconds left. Now the three-point shot put up and off of the mark by Sarkeesian, rebound is off, and that'll be the ball game. 87 to 45 is the final score, and the Cardinals defeat the Grant Lancers, send them home, and now they will wait to, to get the winner of Redlands East Valley or Mira Mesa. And, boy, that, and, and that game will be back here son, Saturday night it's another home game for the Cardinals with the way the playoffs are set up. So I hope the fans will be back. But boy, what a terrific win for the Lawndale Cardinals tonight here on their home court in the first round of the uh, state Division 2A playoff. Lawndale seeded number four in the top half of the bracket. Absolutely. And uh, well, it was an easy time of it, but they, they have to handle these have to keep the foot on the pedal from the first tip off until the final buzzer. They absolutely, well, they did. They led by 39 at the half and they end up winning by 42. And in addition to that, a lot of players got a lot of playing time and the big guys also got a lot of rest. So again, a nice on court win for Lawndale here in the first round. A lot of credit to that Grant Lancer team though. They you know, did not I mean, give they, up. They never gave up. They played with heart all the way throughout, uh, even when they came out for the second half. And I think that somewhere in there, you got to say to the Lawndale team, you know, look at Canyon, look at them, and understand you never, ever quit, all right? And good things will happen eventually if you're um, Grant. But great things happen tonight for Lawndale here at home as they won 87-45. That's right, and uh, we're waiting and let's go to Tamara, center court. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Coach Brownlee. Coach Brownlee, your boys came out here. They hustled on every play. You said your team needed to play uh, defense out here. They need to play as a cohesive unit. How would you describe tonight's win? Uh, I would say about maybe like a B minus, maybe. We could play a little better. Um, we were a little sloppy in the second half. But um, I'm critical of my guys. But um, we just have a higher uh, expectation for ourselves. You know, I mean, a lot of our sloppiness comes to bite us against when we really need it. And that's what we have to learn. Um, that's what we have to learn. We don't want to be, you know, real sloppy and careless with the basketball. And sometimes we're like that, and it doesn't hurt us in these games. 
which we've had a lot of them, but it hurts us um, on our tough schedule. That's why we have 11 losses. Going into the game, Londale was was picked to win this game tonight. I mean, how would you how would you describe tonight with them out on the floor on defense, hustling back and forth? How would you what would how, what would you what would you tell them? What's the message you would you give them tonight? They they play pretty well. I was really proud of Broderick Jones. Buddha uh, played very good on the top of the press tonight, and uh, just overall, he's a little down still. You know, um, we're all hurt from uh, the sectionals. But uh, something we got to get over because we got a new new life here in the regional. So I think the defense was all in all. We, I would give them a good good right on. Okay, who you got? I saw you over here engaging in a conversation with the coach over here. What did the, what did he tell you? What did you guys talk about? Uh, we talked about I, I was in this camp years ago uh, out at Grant um, in a UCLA camp with uh, Coach Wooden. So he was a uh, he was one of the coaches that ran a camp when I was 10 years old. So, you know, he's been there a long time. He also to let the media know he coached Gilbert Arenas, you know what I mean, at Grant. So, you know, he's a good, legendary coach. There's a lot I can learn from him. Okay, thank you. Back to you guys. All right, thank you very much, Tamara. Howard Levine, uh, Levine, uh, Levine, 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 a, a terrific coach in his own right and just didn't have the players or the horses tonight as the Lawndale Cardinals move on. Not in the CIF this team. He, he State had them against 17 other teams. 87 to 45. This team. That's right. So it's uh, well, we can go over the scoring right now, unless we have someone else out at center court. Do we, Tom? Okay. All right. So the scoring for the Lancers: Gio Quintero had six points, and Kai Smith had eight, and five points for Michael O'Keen. Alex McQueen had two. Joseph Lara had four. Six points for Tal Gonan, who averages almost 12, and Chad Holloway, who averages over 13 points, at 10. Two points for Armand Sarkeesian, and two for Davis Williams. And uh, James Casanova, who was their bull in a china closet, didn't get any tonight. And for the Lawndale Cardinals, 15 points for T.J. Johnson, 13 of them in the first quarter. 17 points for Brondricks Jones. And no points for Quincy Pinkard. 11 points for Shemezi Matu in limited action tonight. And uh, six points for David Broster. Nine for Brandon Newman. Two for Chris Murray. And 13 for DeAndre Snedeker. Seven points for Delano Beckles. Five for Chris White. And two for Terrell Johnson. So everybody that got in, except for Quincy, got in the scorebook. Got in the scorebook. So hey. Let's go ahead and figure out who gets what, man, because we, I'm, I'm anxious on this one. Should be another <laughs> tough one. And we'll be back right after this with the player of the game and the tip of the hat winners. Hi, I'm Donnell Beverly from the University of Connecticut, home of the 2011 National Championship UConn Huskies basketball team and your losing your Olympians. Beverly around the back, follow a jumper, good, beautiful shot. It wasn't too long ago that I was playing basketball right here. I just want to thank him for having me here. I'm, I'm honored to play here. And the Huskies are the top dog in 2011. Winning the NCAA championship has always been a goal of mine, but so is getting a great education that will last me a lifetime. You can achieve your goals too. All you have to do is work hard and dream hard, and you can do anything you put your mind to. Eighty-seven forty-five. our final score in game one of the CIF championships pre presented by Farmers. Let's go out to center court. Karen has a very special guest. Broderick's the level of competition a little different tonight than Saturday, but you guys stayed focused the entire game and coming in, that's what you said your goal was. How did it feel out there tonight? Um, it felt pretty good. We just have to keep, we, we just have to keep our focus tonight and keep playing hard. Um, what do you think the team, a game like this does for your team moving forward? Um, it boosts our confidence up. You guys play great. I saw you all enjoying the the entertainment from the bench, watching your bench guys get in and get some buckets. What was that like for you guys? It's a great feeling. You see our bench players get point. I mean, you see, you see our bench players get some action. It's pretty good. Congratulations. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you very much, Karen, and a well-deserved, well-earned 87 to 45 win. 
And I don't know if we're going to get anybody else tonight. So shall we hand out the awards? Well, we shall. There's TJ coming if anybody else to go get him. I don't think we've ever had him. I'd love to see. Okay, He's let's see. He's walking he, straight toward him. Walking now. right at him. He's got right. the purple right at you. There he is, Louie. There you go. Okay, we got him. Louie gets his man. I tell you what, he's. Louie gets his clam and he gets his man. Now, I don't know what the story is there. I'm not going to take that any further. But let's go over to Tam Tammy Lada, who's with uh, Tedrick TJ Johnson. Hi, I'm here with TJ Johnson. TJ, how would you describe tonight's win? Um, tonight we came out aggressive early. We wanted to set the tone real early, bounce back from Saturday, and I think we did a great job of that tonight. Do you feel like this was a statement win being last Saturday? You know, you had what happened from last Saturday. Do you feel like this was a statement win to come out and play hard and hustle on every play? Yes, I think it was. I think we needed to come out to prove to ourselves that we could still win in state playoffs. So I think it was important for everybody to know that and we came out hard and I'm happy for us. I know the coach took you guys out in the last three minutes. You guys were over there cheering your bench players on. What was going What was going through your mind when your bench players was out there playing like starters? Yeah, we always happy for our bench players who usually don't get a lot of time during a close game. So we was happy for them, and I'm happy that they got the chance to play tonight. How do you carry over a win like this? Keep playing with energy. Keep the intensity up on every play. Play hard and just go out there and play like this championship game every night, and I think we can do that. What was the message the coach gave you guys at the end of in the locker room at the end of the game? Um, stay mentally tough. You know, we got a few more games to go to get our goal, and just stay mentally tough for the next goal. And uh, that's all they said. Okay, thank you, and good luck. All right, thank you. Back to you guys. All right, thank you very much, Tamara. And uh, uh, boy, we should have had TJ on more often. He's very <laughs> articulate, knows what he's talking about. He's he's almost a coach right now. Absolutely is, and, and and congratulations to TJ. Our first time uh, well, we being able to well, honor him did, well, for what? For just being on the team and being a good player That's and right. having being a starter. Having That's for sure. Points. Yeah. Let's go back out to center court and back out to Karen. Chris, focus has been a big focus for your team all season. What did it feel like tonight on the court? Tonight it just felt really smooth. It was a good win. You know, we just played hard and just got the win tonight. What does it mean for you and the team being able to have a game like this after Saturday? Uh, it's an honor just to have a home game because usually when you lose, you're away, like you go somewhere far. So we're just lucky to have two back-to-back -back home games. At the end of the game, I saw you cheering on all of your bench guys, getting in the game, scoring some buckets. Was that fun to watch? Yeah, it was a, it was a good night for them. I was happy for them. Congratulations. Good luck in the next round. Thank you. Thanks. Back to you guys. All right, thank you very much, Karen. And now it's time for the drum roll because it's time for everybody. I mean, the game is secondary when it comes to the tip of the hat award, but that's why we do it second. <laughs> Player of the game? Okay. We know who that is. A, a big game for Broderick's Jones. He had 19, uh, 17 points, and I had him listed for two rebounds, although I'm sure he had more than that. But uh, And he also had a block shot or two in there. Playing good defense, had a nice little uh, step back jumper from the baseline as well, and played with a lot of energy tonight. Absolutely did. I mean, and you're right, the step back jumper was clicking. Just a great game for Buddha. The kind of game that Coach Fisher and the coaching staff down at San Diego State are licking their chops and looking forward to seeing next year. That's right, you'd be seeing uh, more of those step back jumpers, I'm sure, uh, down at the Cox Center. And who is our tip of the hat winner of the game? Tip of the hat of we'll the break goes to. It's a first time winner, actually, uh, that will win a tip of the hat tonight. This young man, he got him off to a flying start. Literally. Had three three pointers in the first quarter, had a total of 13 points in the quarter, in the first. Right. And I mean, just came out shooting in a way that we had not seen him shoot all season. And I was so glad to see that for him. Hey, Tedrick, TJ Johnson, you are the tip of the hat award winner, my man. This is for you, this tip of the hat. So congratulations to TJ on a big game tonight and getting the Cardinal effort started. 15 points and a couple of rebounds and lots of helpers. And uh, fo that follows up an 11-point performance against the Canyon at Honda Center on Saturday. So good, good on you there, TJ. Well, the Cardinals improved to 21 and 11 overall. The Lancers finished their 2014-2015 season. 17 and 15 overall and I tell you what the the heart was the biggest part of that team right it certainly was you know and 
And as Coach Brownlee said, obviously they're a coach, a veteran coach, and knows how to get everything he can out of his talent. And what? And they had a good season. Let's face it, they made a run to the city sectional title, lost in the championship game, but nonetheless made it through the early rounds of the playoffs to get to that championship game. That's how good they are. And we saw a little flavor of that tonight, although they'd be the first to tell you, boy, they ran into a buzzsaw here. And a team that, quite frankly, did have a bit of a chip on their shoulder. Had something and, to prove uh, tonight. They, and they uh, got some of it off. There's a long way to go before it's all off, but they took a step in the right direction tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, if uh, Redlands East Valley defeated Mira Mesa tonight of San Diego, uh, that's who we will see on Saturday night here at 6 o'clock at the Cades. And I'll tell you what, that's a team that we saw play against Losinger, and that's a team that has a football mentality. They certainly do. They come ready to play a very physical ball club. In fact, we saw them in the early game out at the – uh, Honda Center they as they played short they right? came up a little short in that game they played Compton uh, in that game came up short against them but uh, they've got some ball players and they will be a much much tougher test for this Lawndale team but the big thing is Lawndale gets to play at home that's okay? right and, and, and you can't overstate that it will be a little bit weird let's face it playing Saturday night in a high school gym at six o'clock in the evening <laughs> um, you know that doesn't happen often but yeah, like I can say the great thing is it's going to be right here at the cage. That's right. Well, until then, uh, well, this is Lou Stowers for Rufus Washington, Karen Brighton, Tamara Lotza, Tom Strickfadden directing and conducting the three-time Star Award winning crew. Telling you once again the final score from the cage. The Cardinals fly high 87-45 over the Grant Lancers. Until Saturday nights, so long.